Hey guys, it's me, Waldo2413, back with another quick video. <clears throat> In this video, guys, what I'm going to go over um, is I had some questions, so it's kind of a quick question and answer. One of the questions was, why did I go with the uh, Halogamu or Halogame embroidery machine over a Tajima, Baradin, or... Uh, uh, some of the other ones and the reason I went with that was um, the last embroidery machine I had was a mystagram uh, 1501 so single head 15 threads um, I hated that thing it was horrible horrible service now that's not a Tajima uh, or a Baradin or anything like that but the reason was is I said um, when I was making my decision, I said, I kind of had a few things in mind. I said, I needed a, a two-head machine. So, with that being said, um, and let me pull some stuff up, too, to kind of help this out here. So what I'm looking at right now, because I'm pulling it up on right now myself. And... Problem is, I think I'm going to have problems finding sales here in the U.S. Or pricing on it. So let me do it this way then. One second. Okay, so. Let me do this one other time because this will help for my other part of it. So let me open this one. Okay, so, I didn't find what I was looking for, but <clears throat> I did some research before on it. Okay, so, one of the things that I wanted, like I said, I wanted a two-head. And I wanted a new machine. Um, and then I'll go over that after. So, and I didn't want to spend an arm and a leg, because my history with the embroidery before, um, on flat things, the Microgram worked fine. When we would do caps and all that, we ran into issues. And then the big thing was is um, when we would get big orders in, it would take longer to do them than it was worth subbing them out. Um, like we'd get 100 hat orders, and it's not a problem to do that on any of these machines. Um, there's heart and hustle, knocking that stuff out all day long. Ride Beats, knocking stuff out all day long. The problem is, is I didn't want to sit at the embroidery machine all day doing one at a time. So let's say that's four minutes a hat. Um, your, your time takes a lot longer. You can be more productive doing other things. Can you let an embroidery machine run by itself? Yes. Um, do most people do that? Nah, not really. They'll usually stay around in case you have a thread break or anything else. So to me, I said um, I wanted at least to be able to get two out in that four minutes instead of one. Um, it's just a numbers thing and everything revolves around numbers if you're productive or not or profitable or not in a lot of the businesses or you're going to have to change your pricing. Um, so I needed two heads or more. Um, I didn't want to go with something like a four or five head. I'm limited on space. Um, so I went with a two head. 
The next big thing is I started looking at, and I had a lot of people suggest um, what I went with. I There's a few people, Mary's one of the people. Um, she's a distributor. I followed her videos. I went through the Facebook page and watched a lot of people get these machines, um, seeing the issues they had, and seeing the, how they troubleshoot and everything else, and any problems they had, how they work it through. So I looked at that, I looked at some new machines, and then what stopped me from the Tajima and all the other ones is the price. And a good example, I just pulled up a used one, and this is just a quick one, There's you can find numbers everywhere. But a used two head, I'm looking at right around $11,000, and that's a uh, 2005 so 20 uh, so that thing is over 15 years old um, so I was like I want something new so if I'm getting something new in that I'm looking at right around 20,000 plus for a two head Tajima or Baradin um, or ZSK and so um, I would love to have them um, if any of these companies are out there and would love to send me one, go right ahead. I will gladly use it, make videos on it. But that being said, um, I started looking at numbers on it. And um, could I have spent it? Yeah. Do I see me using it as much right now? No. Um, so there's no need to drop that on that much on equipment. Um, and me not have much stuff lined out. Um, we used to do a lot. We started subbing it out. The reason we stopped summing it out is vendors stopped getting us product quick enough um, from when we would get an order in. Um, we used to get stuff subbed out, it'd be maybe a week to two week turnaround time. And then it started being three to four weeks. Um, and then the other stuff, they just missed deadlines. And then the quality went downhill really quick um, on the outsourcing. So we just slowly stepped away from the embroidery. Um, and like I said, so we started to look back into it. And I looked and I'm like, hey, could, could afford it, yeah. Do I want to spend that much money just to make videos on and just to see if I really want to get back into it? Um, because the learning curve with embroidery is very steep compared to like uh, screen printing, lasers, um, DTF, all the other stuff's fairly simple. Um, embroidery, you've got digitizing, there's so many aspects of it that make it more. Uh, more harder to pick up than other things. There's not as many videos out there. There's not many videos on people showing digitizing, um, what they're doing, how they're doing it. Um, screen printing, there's millions of videos. You want to learn anything about screen printing or heat pressing, literally you can search and there'll be a million of them on the side and they'll all be fairly helpful. The embroidery is a different thing. The other thing is the machines, there's, there's so many different machines they're all very and so what you find online you might find an embroidery video but it's not a machine you're looking for um, so that being said I was like well uh, I can go with the Recoma also Recoma's got good press they're here in the States um, made overseas they're a Chinese machine also um so that being said that was the only one even close but the Recoma 2 head isn't in, even in the same price range what I paid um, so the other thing is it's pluses and minuses on all of it. When you buy from China, if you do it the way I did, I'm handling the import, I'm handling the shipping, I'm handling all the customs fees, and it can take a while. When it got here to my port in Nashville, um, ports aren't just on the coast, they do have inner po uh, ports. When it got to Nashville port, literally it sat almost three to four weeks trying to get it to clear through customs and get the right paperwork. Um, the other thing too, when it sits in a port, you are going to be paying fees, so keep that in mind. Um, but getting the machine landed here um, and paying for the machine, the machine was like six thousand, um, almost seven thousand. There's fees for the shipping, all that thousand, two thousand. You're looking at right around eight to ten thousand dollars to have a machine here. Um, but that's still a fraction of the price of a new machine. Now here's the other thing. They do give you, um, and they, they're running sales all the time. Um, now they're going to U.S. distributors. Um, so that being said, yeah, I think you can still get double heads. You can't get single heads here without going through a U.S. distributor. But that's a whole other story. But so back to the thing. They have a five-year warranty on the machine, um, and they are there pretty much from two o'clock my time till like 10, 11 at night, or even later. 
Um, so if I need to get a hold of them, they, there is a huge window where I can chat with them. They literally will give you um, whatever app it is, their video conference with you. They are very good about keeping in touch with you, making sure everything um, is running smooth and all that. And going through what you need to get here. Because when you get the machine, even though they send you hoops and all that, you still got to get stuff like oils and all. It's got a, an auto oiler on it, but you still got to get oil. They don't ship it with oil. They give you a program. Um, it's a little bit less desirable from what people are saying. But in general, that is the reason I went with that, is the price. Because here's the thing. The next option was to go used. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of good used equipment out there. But here's the thing. I'm, if, for instance, the one I pulled up right there. The Tajima TF MX 1502 embroidery machine, eleven thousand dollars. So it's already more than I paid for mine. It's 15 years old. Um, nothing wrong with old equipment, embroider or <clears throat> screen printing machines. They're older and all that. Um, but the problem is you start running into issues. Some of the issues are um, maintenance, getting parts. No matter what, even if the machine was well kept, metal parts moving, like an embroidery machine does, it's going up and down, up and down, them parts are going to wear the metal. I don't care what kind of metal it's made out of, it could be made out of unobtainium, it's still going to wear. Um, so, you've got to factor that into the thing. Um, and so even if it was taken care of in that part, I was worried about, okay, when I get it, is it going to be working fine? Will I have any issues? Because the other thing too, I've got a warranty. I've got text on pretty much call that can help me out um, on a new machine. If I bought a new Tajima, I'm going to have the same thing. I'm going to have text on call. I'm going to have that. A used machine, you're on your own. You are servicing it yourself. You're doing everything on your own. Um, and there are people I know, um, I'm sure you guys watch other videos. Juan's got a five head. Um, literally, he got it. he's still working on the five heads. They're not always up and running. All the heads aren't. He's rebuilt them in videos. You guys can check it out if you want to see how to work on them. But the thing is, is I don't want to get something that I'm going to have to turn around and keep working on and maintenance to keep it up and running. Um, it's not productive for me to be sitting there maintenance something. And it's something I don't have much experience with, so I don't really want to just dive right in and happen to maintenance something I don't really know much about. Um, now, you can get lucky. Perfect example, Rye had only a few problems at the beginning, the bolts being loose. Um, his is running perfectly fine. Um, the other thing I always worry about too though, and it's older equipment, is parts and service. Because there are parts over time goes obsolete. Because they make new lines of things, new uh, products, new series, and things change. Like a control panel for instance. Um, some of the older ones are limited to how, many, how big the USB drive can be. Um, and for instance, mine's got even Wi-Fi capability to send it to it. So I was like, I don't want to get something that I might not be able to maintenance. It's a good example. I have an Anatol, and it's horrible getting parts um, for the machine that's 10 to 15 years old total now. So um, they just don't keep them in stock, and it's hard to find them. So in embroidery, yeah, there's probably more out there, but I didn't want to have to have to chase things down to find them to maintenance my equipment. The other thing, too, is technology has evolved, in a perfect example, in 15 years. Um, some machines were using, and some still do, use stepper motors. Um, the difference is, and I don't have a mess up of anything, but like a good example, like when you'll see something where the embroidery will be stepped all the way over and it doesn't line up and it's shifted, what it is on a stepper motor, there is no encoders um, compared to a servo motor. What that is, is a servo motor is responding to where it's at in relativity and relative to the position, left, right. If it's a CNC machine, it's forward, back, up, down. It knows where it's at within a sixteenth, eighth inch, thousandths, whatever the, the, it's calibrated to, but it knows where it's at. A stepper motor, on the other hand, when it steps, um, and they're all indexed differently, you have micro stepping, half steps. But let's say it's got 360 steps, so one for each degree. So every time, that's only how much you can turn. Now, when you do half steps, you can get smaller things. And what happens, there is no feedback. So if it misses that step and turns, a, let's say, one and a half degrees, it doesn't know it went that extra distance. It's going to keep going. So if something bumps it or accelerates it too quick, it doesn't know that. Now, there are newer motors out there that are stepper hybrids. 
um, that does use an encoder style system, um, the difference to is torque. Torque and speed, a servo is always going to be faster than a stepper motor um, and you torque and all, there's, there's advantages to them. Um, so that was my other decision too. I wanted something more modern and up to date and I wanted some of the newer bells and whistles. Mine has the servo, um, it's got a touch screen um, control panel, it's got other things that are more modern, more relative, a little bit easier to function with, um, so I went that route. The Rakomas look nice. Um, like I said, uh, the reason I didn't go with them was the simple fact that it was still, um, the Rakoma was, I don't have it in front of me, the Rakoma is going to cost more. The single head would have been what, I, what I've got pretty much for my double, double head. So that was the reason there. The other thing too um, that you do run into is shipping time. Rakoma was backed up for a little while getting people some equipment. Um, but even mine, when they get it from overseas, it, it's a few months um, because the waterways are backed up right now. Your normal something that would take a month is two to three months. The other thing too, tying something up in customs was three weeks, so that was a month. So it took roughly about three months to get the machine. Um, that being said, does everyone want to do that? No. Um, there are U.S. distributors that do have them in stock. You don't get them as cheap compared to buying direct from them. Um, but they're slowly going to go to distributors. And what will happen to distributors for importing them and all the other fees, they'll make some money on top of it. You'll still get a, a, a cheaper machine, but um, it might not be as cheap as what you're wanting or it might be a little bit higher than some of these other machines. But they do a lot of things. Um, they're one of the largest manufacturers of embroidery machines in China. Um, and they make a lot of other company stuff. So you can check them out, like I said. But everyone's got their different opinions on. Well, And I had people, hey, well, if you need to get parts, it could be forever to get parts or the service isn't going to be that good. So far, everything's been good. Every little thing that I've had issues with, they've took care of it, answered over the phone, um, refunded money on issues on some things and sent parts right away if I need them. So, so far they've been good. Now granted, when they send them, do I get them the next day? No. Um, but with how things are right now, like even like Tajima is not made in America. Um, they're made over, they've got an overseas in Taiwan or uh, Korea, one of them. But, and, but they do have a shop in China also. So that being said, some things you're not, it's just like the hoodies in wintertime. You're not going to get them if you didn't get them in time. They're back ordered for a month or two. So some parts can be back ordered and take time. Keep that in mind also. Um, follow along in my journey and you guys will see how it goes to see was it worth going the China route or was it better for go that. I'll keep you guys up to date. Um, I don't have a dog in this fight and none of them are paying me. So I'm going to be honest with you. If I have issues, kind of like I did with my Micegram, I'll be honest and tell you it was horrible, this or that. Um, the first issue I did have, which doesn't really, um, it doesn't amount to much, but they, of course they send you papers on what you need and all that. And let me find the one. They're very informative, but I'm trying to find the one that was kind of... And someone might, here it is, someone in America here that has one might be able to answer me. Um, so, they tell me I need grease. So I've got the, uh, the Lily White, which is like a, a light oil that goes where you can kind of use on the bobbins and all that stuff. The next one they say, it says White Specialty Grease. Um, and then the third one, it says, and of course they're telling you what to prepare for. And that third one, it says, uh, correct yellow grease. So they just say white grease, sewing machine oil, liquid, um, prepare the correct white grease, please prepare the correct yellow grease. Um, and then the yellow grease, when you read it, it's a Pennzoil Lithium Grease number two. So the numbers in grease are the weight kind of like it's kind of like an oil but it's how thick it is or how thin it is. Um, three and four is going to be like a two is like uh, I want to say creamy peanut butter but it's I guess you'd say kind of like creamy peanut butter 
maybe shaving cream. It doesn't just pour out. But three and four is going to be more thick and chunky. Um, not really chunks, but just thicker and more um, thicker viscosity. Well, what happened is when I ordered the, because they also sent me messages also on the grease, and it said pretty much the breakdown of them. Um, white specialty grease, and it's in one of these other things. The white specialty grease is lithium grease also. It's white lithium grease. Well, the difference is nothing really in grease. It's colorings. Every company puts their own brand. Penzo, for instance, puts the yellow in it. Um, but when I ask them, like, oh, the, the lack of me not speaking their language and the, the wording lost in mine to theirs, um, they kept saying it's a different grease. And um, I'd ask them, I said, it says lithium. They said, yeah, I said, they said it's a lithium. I said, okay, it's a number two. They said, yeah, they said, but it's yellow. Well, at the end of the day, yellow and white lithium are still the same as long as it's a number two. Um, unless you have a brand that made a grease special or put something else in it, um, which it would normally be on the list. But this stuff is just normal grease, um, white lithium grease that they are suggesting. So that was the, the first mistake, or not mistake, but issue that I had. Um, and then they sent me a link, but the link wasn't one that I could order. It wasn't an Amazon link here in the States. Um, it was out of the country one, just to order the Pennzoil one. You can pull the Pennzoil up, you can get it, um, but at the end of the day, it's white lithium. So that was my only issue so far um but follow along with the journey guys you will soon see me go through the steps but other than that so far it's been good thanks again guys hope this video was helpful if you have any more questions let me know i'll try to answer as much as i can um that was one of the ones because people kept asking why i went with that over the other and like i said it was it, the money thing and then i like the service i liked everything i've seen from the people that have them in the states they're making some amazing puff hats that's what my goal was to make something like how Ry did here or like how Vegas got on his. That's what my thing is. I just want to really do puff hats. But they've got a lot of um, kind of new stuff and all that. And everyone that I watched on their Facebook pages and all that where people just post their own stuff, they've given rave reviews. There's people that I know that have them, um, that I've went and seen run them, and they love them. I, one of my one friends has got a uh, Tajima and a Baradit, and he's like, hey, it's right up there with them. He said, I would buy another one of these before I buy them because of the money. So we're going to see how that goes because here's the other thing too. If it holds up for a set amount of time before, I, let's say, I have to maintenance it or buy anything, it's a cost over comparing the other ones. So a new one to new one, I can buy almost two to three of these compared to one of these. So the factor is, let's say down the line, if I need more embroidery and it works, I'm getting a, almost a two for one or three for one compared to going with one of the more well-known names. Now the downside, if it's not as good, yeah, the other one definitely shines through. That's, the, that's what time's going to tell and that's what I'm going to find out. Um, parts wearing, I'm not totally worried about that just for the simple fact that a new one and an old one parts are going to wear. Um, the only difference is, is like maybe what they're made out of. Something could wear a little bit quicker than the other. But in, in the big scheme of things, parts do wear. Parts have to be replaced. Um, so that being known, looking at it though and reading their specs and all that, like I said, they put servos on theirs compared to steppers. It's a plus compared to some of the other ones. So little things like that. Again, guys, hopefully this was helpful. I'm Waldo2413. Please give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful, guys. Thanks again. Um, please like, subscribe, and follow. And if you have any comments, leave them down below, guys. Thanks again. Well, peace. I'm out.